Hi Best Buds, it's Kathy with Kathy's Garden and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today we're going to have a tutorial, a step-by-step -step process of how you can make these adorable journal charms, journal dangles, journal jewelry. Oh, I just love them! But first, let's have a shout out to Julie, Nancy, Donna, Karen, and Anne. I appreciate each and every one of you. Look how beautiful that is. That one is a stamp that I colored with some markers. Oh my goodness, so pretty. Let's look at some others. There's this one right here. Look at this one. This is book page with a piece of vellum over the top. Let's look at the back. It looks just like that. Very, very pretty. Let's look at this one. This one I put a bulb pin on and a little bit of jewelry from the thrift store. <laughs> I got some jewelry from the thrift store and I thought those matched it beautifully. Let's look at the back on this one. Oh, look at that. All right, let's look at this one. Once again, I added some jewelry. So this is a book page with some of that um, tissue paper that has the gold dots on it that we were using a lot uh, a little while back. This is the back of this one. And then there's this one right here. And it looks just like this. It's got a big bobble on this one. This is a much bigger one. That's the back. There's this one. Now this one was made with cardstock. And so it was a thick enough cardstock that I was able to just let the back side of the cardstock show. So that was the front and then the back I just allowed to stay put. This one was a cardstock too. And there it is in the back, but I just painted a little gold over it. Let me show you how I made these adorable journal charms, journal dangles, journal jewelry. All right, let's set these over here to the side. Now I have prepped quite a bit for this little project. I am going to be using my Y-I-E-H-O UV resin. It's clear hard top, hard type, I'm sorry. Fast cure, low odor. Now if you have uh, resin, UV resin, you are going to make sure that you have good ventilation. Follow the directions. If you don't have that, you could use your glossy accents. The really, the difference between it is that the UV resin is probably harder when it dries. This one takes about 24 hours and this one takes about two minutes to dry. All right, you're going to need that. You're going to need something round. Something round that you're going to be able to slip your wire off of. Because we're going to make all of these, let me grab one again. All of these have a wire around the edge. Okay. So we need, we're going to make our little, I don't know what to call it, our little um, form. And to make our little form, we're going to need some kind of little circle that you can slip your little piece off of. Let me grab something real quick. I have this over there. It's a pencil sharpener, but it's round. But I couldn't slip this over because it's got little bumps and I couldn't slip it over here because it's bigger. So this wouldn't work. Even though it's round, I couldn't slip my little circle off of this. It needs to be smooth like this. This is a Distress Ink Vintage Photo Refill and I can slip it right on off. Okay, these are two different sizes. I can also use my YooHoo glue stick if I remove this, my top, then it will slip off. This is bigger right here. This is a bigger circle. Now, to determine what size circle you need, you'll need to first get your what you want to have in your charm. Now, this is what I was 
uh, talking about that I stamped it. I stamped it on a piece of fabric. This one right here, oh, I just dropped them all. Oh, goodness. Is this one right here. It's a different colored tulips. Same colored flowers, different colored tulips. Okay, there you go. You can see that a little better. So it's a stamp that I had. I stamped it on, and then I just colored in the little flowers. Okay, so you can get different. Let me see here. Let me dig up here just a second. Sorry. This book page is just glued onto some. Uh, actually, it's heavy copy paper, or you could use uh, this, which is, um, I think it's Roxy's creation, and I glued it onto a piece of uh, file folder. What else do we have here that you can use? Um, here's another one. The same come, came from the same page, but I thought this was beautiful right here. Or maybe you want to use something like um, maybe some birds. You can do select some birds if you want to. So let's see here. I'm kind of really wanting to do this flower right here. And let's do this. So what I want to do is, this is copy weight paper, and this is the card stock, or the file folder. I'm looking for my glue. This is my art glitter glue. And I'm going to glue, or take my glue, and glue this down better, because it's not. I'm going to get that glued down well. And do we want to maybe do one of these? So I'm going to grab a little piece of file folder here and I'm going to need to trim it off because we just need a little bit of it. We don't need a ton. And I'm going to take my little square and I'm going to glue it right on to my file folder and I'm actually going to use my art glitter glue. So I'm going to just glue it right on here. Just like that. Glue it down. Get that corners here. Alrighty, pretty good. Pretty good right there. Okay, so the next thing, oh, we were going to do this one too. So we're going to do these three. We're going to do this one, this one, and this one. Alright, the next thing we're going to need is this wire right here. And the name of the wire is, or the, the trademark is bead landing so it's in the jewelry department where you go um, looking for this it's wire that comes in gold comes in silver and it comes in that um, rose gold color I'm looking for my end huh? oh goodness let me stop the video and find the end real quick <laughs> all right what you're going to need to make the wire uh, on the outside is a pin or a pencil or something that has a like a little hook right here because you're going to use that to help yourself pull the wire and twist it. You're going to need to get some needle nose pliers and um, something to cut your pliers. Needle nose pliers will cut too but this is much sharper. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get some of our wire. Now, I'm not going to cut a lot of it because I would like you to see. And I don't think you're going to be able to see unless I take a small piece. Usually, if I'm doing it off cam camera, I do a large piece because then I can do quite a few at, at one time and I don't have to keep twisting it. You Get your end of your wire. This is very soft wire. Very, very soft. You're not struggling to use it at all. You find the ends, the two ends, and you put them together. So you got your two ends together. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start this with my right hand. 
I'm going to take my two wires and I'm going to grab them with my needle nose plier and I'm going to simply twist a couple times. I'm going to change my hands because I'm right handed. Okay, so I've got that. You see that right like that? See that just like that? It's twisted on the end of the needle nose pliers. So now we, we've got a loop right here. Remember? We've got two pieces. We've got a loop. You're going to take your pen or your pencil, whichever you have that has this thing on it, and you hook it on. You can see how I hooked that on. Can't get my shirt in there, I don't think. Nope. What you're going to do is you're going to twist the pin and you keep twisting and it does take a little bit of time because it's going to twist up the wire and make the wire into a twisted piece of wire. It's not going to curl anymore. You can see it starting to twist now. You can actually see that. So I'm just going to twist it just a little bit more. I want to get it nice and twisted. Okay, we're about there, guys. Just about. That's good. Now when I stop, see, it's just completely straight like that. Okay, take it off your needle nose pliers. Take it from your little pin that you used your little... Thing that you hook on paper or some people used to hook it on your shirt but they don't anymore okay so now we've got that piece of wire it's in my hand you can see it I hope you can see it in my hand and let's get one of our little pieces so we've got this one remember we glued our stamp that we colored this is rather large so I'm going to use my glue stick and you can see if it's, you know, the size because you can just place it right over your image. It covers it up pretty good. Whereas this size really doesn't cover it up as well. It covers it, but I'd like to get a bigger piece, you know, a bigger picture of the tulips and the flowers. I'm going to lay it right over my little, um, it's my Yutuhu stick, but it's my little circle thing. I'm going to leave a little, you're going to need a little bit of a ta tail. Move this out of the way you can see. And I need a little bit of a tail. So you put it together like that and you simply twist it. Now, I first twist it on. And then once I get it twisted on, I cut my end off that's all garbled up where I used to hold it onto my needle nose plier. And I throw that piece away. And then I cut myself this right at the end. You just have that little piece that you have. I'm going to cut the other one off just the same length. Okay. Take your needle nose pliers again and grab a hold of these two pieces, loose pieces. And you need, <clears throat> you need to twist. I can get this. You need to twist. We're doing the same thing. It's just really not as easy as it was before but we need I need to switch hands we need to twist I'm not a very good lefty okay we need to twist that's probably pretty good and I'm going to cut this off you see it's kind of sprawled apart the pieces I'm going to cut this off just like that I'm going to throw it away you can see now we look like that all right, now I need to get it off of this. Remember I said I'd have to take the lid off to get it off? <clears throat> so I take my lid off, and now I can just pull this right on off, just like that. And there's my nice little circle. Now we're going to need to put a loop on the end of this. And I truly think this is the hardest part of the whole thing, is putting the loop on the end. I'm going to bend this downward. And I'm actually going to cut some of this off. And what's left? It's a little bit more than a half an inch. I don't really measure. I'm just going to 
uh, oh, I was trying using a paintbrush handle earlier, later this afternoon, when I was trying my hardest to figure out how to make y'all understand or an easy way to do this, and I think that's the easiest way. There's a pretty good loop right there. I did a pretty good job. Now, I want to really make that flat. I would need to really smush it down. I have a little tiny hammer here. I don't know how I got this glue on there. But I have a little tiny hammer. And I have a little tiny block of wood. And you can see how oh, I've been hammering on it. I can't do it on my glass mat. But I'm going to lay this down like this. And I'm going to hammer a couple times. And then I'm going to turn it over to the other side. And I'm going to hammer it couple times. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. I have to lay it on the floor to do it, you guys. I'll break my glass mat and maybe even my table if I don't put it on the floor. All right, so it's the loop isn't round anymore. It's more flat. It's just flatter. It just makes it smoother. It's just nicer, I think. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this right on top of our little whatever it is that you're going to use. This happens to be a stamp. And we're going to get some glue. Now, I'm going to use my art glitter glue. You can't use a glue stick for this, guys. You could use white school glue, um, anything that dries clear. Uh, you could use and that's wet you know that's a wetter glue not a glue stick and I'm going to take my wire it's more like an oval and I'm going to apply my glue on top of my wire just like that fairly heavily and I'm going to lay it right on the top just like that. I'm going to press it down just a little bit. Sometimes it helps if you bend it a little bit. It, you have to work with it just a little bit to get it to to want to grab hold. You could put something heavy on it if you want. Um, sometimes it always works and I just laid my tools on top for a little bit till it set up enough that you can remove it. And I have one over here somewhere. Here it is. I did earlier. And it's all glued down. Now once you get it to this stage right here, and you get it to um, to stay uh, down. See, that's why I had to do stages and I had to prep. Because I don't think this is going to, it's starting to, it's going to take a little bit of time to get it to, to grab hold, to dry enough to grab hold. I'm going to set this over here. Okay. And put that back on top of it. Maybe that will help. All right. So after I just did this step and it's dry, you look at it and you're going to need to see if you have any holes. Do you have any spaces? up on the edges inside the edges because if you have any spaces any gaps and you go and you put your either your glossy accents or your UV resin it will find that hole and then it will come out and then it, it won't work quite as well so all you need to do is after you get to this stage you look to see if there are any holes. So I've got this one. I've made this one. I have this one. I've even got that one. I've got this one. And I wanted to talk about this one. If you think it might be easier to use your hole punch and punch your piece out first and then put your wire circle over it it's not this is much harder way to do it 
than this way. This way is much, much easier, like tenfold easier. But I did it this way just to show you it can be done, and um, you can do that. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my UV resin. I'm going to get my a pin, uh, just a straight pin. I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to put my UV resin on top, directly on top, inside of the little circle that we made with the wire. All the way around. Now whether you're using UV resin or maybe you're using the glossy accents, it will, it's self-leveling, both of it. It will go level for you. So there's that one. Let's get this one done. It goes very quickly after you, after you get your wire circle, your frame, that's the word I've been looking for, your wire frame. Once you get your wire frame glued down to the picture that you want, it goes really fast after that. Whether you use the glossy accents or you use the UV res resin, it's going to go really fast. So you can really, you know, whip them out. You just have to prep them to be able to get to the next stage. So you could do this with the with your glossy accents and then the next day you could do the next step because I've got I've got a couple more steps to do. We're not quite done yet. So get this on here like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this little fella. This little fella right here, he's a book page with some butterflies. They're big butterflies. I don't know, I don't think it turned... I don't think you really can see that they're butterflies. So that makes me say that I don't think it was a very good choice for me. These butterflies, on the other hand, yeah, I think I you know, can definitely tell that. Now I'm looking at this and seeing if I have any glaring bubbles. Um, not really. I don't think there's any that are really glaring at me. I see a couple, but they don't really bother me. Alrighty, the next thing that I want to do is I've got my UV light right here. You don't ever want to turn your UV light on before you have put down your UV resin. You don't put your room UV resin down as your at, when your light is on because then you're just going to mess everything up because it takes that quick to mess it up just just a few moments and um, and your whole project is messed up so I'm going to plug it in because I've already got mine all, all filled up it's going to place that right over there like this I'm going to wait a few minutes as I talk to you about something else. So right here in this bag, maybe, nope, you can't really, that light's really messing with my camera, isn't it? So right here, I have some pieces of jewelry. When I go to the thrift store, I always look at the jewelry. And some of the, well, definitely, the older jewelry has um like the beads have already have hooks in them and that's a really nice thing to already have a hook in your bead oh i'm glad i didn't drop that on there that would have been bad like let me see if i can show you see how this bead has a hook on it all of these beads have hooks on them so i thought that we could get a couple of these ready and use it uh, in our dangle because they're going to get done here in just a few minutes. Of course, there's another step, but it won't take long. So I'm going to trim or cut this right here. I'm going to 
cut this right there. Okay. And take this off. There we go. So I've got a little dangle here. That would be cute to use, a little dangle. We could use a dangle. We could use a solid bead right here, a solid bead, that kind of lavendery color that I said I used for that one. And then I've got a gold one. Oh, that's really pretty. See here, this one has silver, red, and black. That's really cool. All right, so let's move this over to this one. And then let's see about this. It's completely dry, guys. It's completely dry. All right, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to take our scissors. And we have to cut this back off. So I'm going to take my scissors and just trim around. Trim around my uh, wire frame that we made. Okay, It's not hard at all. Just trim around it. Take your time. This is the hardest part right here where it's that loop is, but it's really not hard. You just have to get your scissors under there and give it a trim. Bend it back a little bit. Work with it just a tiny bit. There we go. How cute is that? That light is just really messing with stuff. Let's move it to this one. So I got that one cut out. Let's cut this one out. There we go. Oh, that one wasn't hard at all around that loop. So they all have their own little personalities. <laughs> Some will be super easy and others you'll have to, you know, maybe work with just a little more. Okay, so right around the edge. Look at that one. That one's really sweet too. Like I said, this light from this UV resin is really messing with everything. Completely dry. Oh my gosh, I love this one with the fabric and the stamp. I just, it's one of my favorites. Favorite, favorite, favorite. I can't move my scissors and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. There. Oh my goodness, look at that one. Now let's get rid of this light and you can see better. Ah, already it's better. So, already it's much better. Okay, let's get this one. So I trim around. Okay. So you can use book pages, you could use magazine pages, you could use um, paper pads, you could use digitals, you could use fabric like I did, and a stamp. That one's already done because we've already got that. That's still one more step yet to do. That's why I'm taking all of these off because there's one more step. And I would truly would like to have all these finished. <laughs> By the time the video is done, it's a great mass make because once you get going on them, you really don't want to stop making them. They're really super fun. You start getting in your scraps and you're like, oh my, this one would be really pretty. Oh, I want that one. And, oh, let's try this and let's do that. And you, know, you just really get into it and it's really, really fun. Alrighty, the next thing. I've got my folk art metallic 
pure gold and I'm going to just put a little bit right here on my glass mat then I'm going to get my my little uh, brush which has been in my alcohol and I'm going to get my butterfly one that pretty that's so pretty and I'm going to paint it so I didn't realize that that has that black on the back of it but it does you could if it really bothered you you could cover this it doesn't that whoop whoop it doesn't bother me that much but yeah probably won't pay attention to your file folder I didn't realize that was on the back of that one I'm catching the sides as you can see catching the sides and I'm putting a nice amount of gold paint it dries really quick on there and it got a little on the front I'm just gonna wipe it off just like that super sweet now I'm gonna turn it upside down on some of these like this one do you see the gold that's inside right here on the inside I did that before I put the UV resin on so if you want that look you would need to put that on before you put the UV resin on okay before the glossy accents because that's underneath it's underneath the resin or it would be underneath your glossy accents whatever you have that you're going to be using and I will um, put the name of the UV resin that I'm using I'll put it down in the description down below and I'll put the wire down there too and once again you buy the wire where you buy your jewelry making that's just the coloration is just where that UV resin kind of seep, started seeping through before we uh, put the light on it. If I had put the light on it right away, it wouldn't have seeped through like that at all. But since we're painting it, it's not really going to show. You're not going to be able to notice it. It'll just blend right on in. I'm going to catch the edges. I don't want the edge of the paper to have any white okay I love that one I just love that one I think that one is so sweet so this is all you have to do guys it's easy it's really pretty easy now I realize you know if you have trouble uh, with small things in your hands and stuff then yeah maybe maybe this isn't the project for you but if your hands still you know you still get your hands to do things for you um, this is so much fun so so much fun and a great mask make because once you get going you don't want to stop plus you get all your things out all your supplies and all that then you're going to want to make more than just one or two because you know you've you've got all your stuff out so once you get all your stuff out it's like yeah we're going to make an afternoon of it and we're just going to make charms and out of all kinds of things you'll just start going through magazines and all your paper scraps and all kinds of things you will just really start start grabbing everything all right so now you've got your back so now you have maybe some of these bulb pins somebody asked me what size these were I didn't know they came in different sizes it's not quite an inch it's almost an inch but not quite is this dry yet pretty dry okay there's that pretty pink one Ooh, how about if we add 
this cluster. Oh, no, maybe this gold. I think this gold might look really pretty with it. It has a big loop on it. Do we have another big one? Here's the other big one. That's what it needs. It needs a big one. I'm going to cut this. Maybe. There we go. I didn't want it to pop in my face. Here's a big little, uh, a big little, <laughs> a big little uh, bubble. Well, I have a hard time holding that paper, having that pin, and for you to be able to see how it's going to look. How pretty is that? Okay, I'll lay it down so we can see it a little better. This one is pink. Where's the one that we thought we would use with the, um, oh, here. Where's this one? Yeah. Let's put this dangle, these dangles of these pearls on this one. Oh, goodness. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you guys. I, like I said, once you get going on these things, <laughs> you're not going to be able to stop because they're so much fun to make. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there guys. Bye now.